Welcome back to Challenges of Faith radio program. I'm Gary McCann, the producer and host. I'd like to acknowledge God, co-hosts, and listeners. Today's topic is about a drug dealer, also known as a death distributor. We're talking about relationships now. The only requirement that is necessary for this person to be able to date and share their emotions with an individual that they are not asking, no, not using or abusing drugs themselves, but can appreciate the fact that there is a drug dealer, that the other individual is helping the economy by ensuring individuals of all races, genders, cultures, class, and economics are indebted to them either by being addicted in financial ruin, being glorified mules, or on the verge of death. Say what? Yeah. You went to the pond of water, and here is your prayer. Oh, God, please send me a drug dealer to be in my life for a relationship, a romantic relationship, so that we can date and then get married. That was your prayer, was it not? The legal definition of a drug dealer is a person who sells drugs that are illegal. And they can also be legal and be sold by individuals who happen to be in the medical professional. You know, a doctor can write a script A pharmacist can fill it. What are the cons of dating or marrying a drug dealer? The person's life is always in danger. But you already knew that, didn't you? You already knew that that type of business is dangerous. I remember a high-ranking law enforcement person requesting a meeting. They wanted to share how information was received regarding myself. You know, messing with the drug people's money, flowing into the poor, disadvantaged, low-income community, which meant my life was in jeopardy. And the byproduct, those individuals who were close to me, you know, like family. There are a lot of corrupted individuals out there in all walks of life and titles. You got those armed dealers and human traffickers. You know, they're in the same circle of drug dealers. Think about a one wrong move in the person in your life or your life is gone forever. You got the cartels and persons selling drugs in your community. They're cold. They'll hunt you down and to the end of the world, they think you are more of a threat than an asset to them. And don't think that you're going to escape from law enforcement because you're going to be constantly on the run. And if they catch you and God forbid there are weapons involved, think about it. Everybody's life is in danger. But you remember now that was your prayer. You wanted to date or marry a drug dealer, or you're one. Either way, you're going to have to learn to lay low because both sides is going to likely want to get rid of you or your partner one day. And the person in your life that you want to be your partner, your boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband or wife, wife or husband, they could be a liar. Let's be real. They lie. And some kill if they are caught up in gangs. Think about it, lying about their work and where they get their money. That's part of their daily life. So don't expect your drug dealer to be honest with you because they're likely going to use you without you or them realizing it. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You already know that's going to happen because that's the reason why you went in prayer to be in a relationship with this person. You know, a lot of people are used by their drug dealer partner as a mule or cover so that they don't get detected while carrying out their work. Is that you? 
And just think about that, all that you have been enjoying in life and the perks of having some gang members beat up whoever bullied you in high school because of yours or your partner's connection. That's probably what you want. Is that not? Well, only you really know. What's your motive? And remember now, drug dealers, now you know they're never going to last long in their position. Either they're going to get killed by other gang members or get arrested. And think about it. With all the illegal activities in the past, it's impossible to imagine a happily ever after with children and grandchildren surrounding you when you retire from that lifestyle. And you know there's no after work, you know, activity like going fishing, family vacation, or attending your child's graduation ceremony, because you can't even live a normal life without thinking somebody's after you. You know it's true. And just really think about what you have can be gone in a day. The competitors decide you both of you are in the way, and when law enforcement gathers enough evidence against you or your partner, that comfortable life that you've been used to is gone. Remember your prayer? That's what you wanted in your life. And you got to remember, not many drug dealers can stay away from that substance abuse. And most of the cartels, they're going to force their muse to be addicted to drugs as a way to control them. And that way, <laughs> they need to rely on their supplies heavily. So they can't go to law enforcement. So they got to keep working for the cartel or whatever organization. And you got to think about it. Is there boyfriend or girlfriend, girlfriend or boyfriend, or husband or wife, wife or husband? Even if you have enough willpower to say claim, you or your partner may force the other one to take drugs. And think about the boundaries from a moral standpoint. It's twisted. You know, and God forbid you're subjected to some type of physical abuse if you refuse to play by their rules. So you're talking about maintaining some type of relationship with a drug addict. You know that's no roses, especially when they have no desire to quit. And when you think about trying to stop them from using drugs, <laughs> that's not your top priority. Because remember, now you're a drug dealer. And, and so when you're in a circle like that, not letting yourself descend into that hole and start abusing is your only hope to stay somewhat clean. And you expect for them to get a, a job? But the question is, you got to ask an answer for your life. If it's you, do you want to be with the drug dealer forever? Think about it. Now it's time to go take an application, pick up one to get some type of subsidy. And, and it's not possible because the system's going to flag your name or their name. And so law enforcement, the next moment is going to be at your door. Now, if you throw away all society's stigma, when you put the future into the picture, you'll see it's not a relationship that's going to last. Can you see that or do you want to see that? You probably don't want to see that. You know why? You pray for this relationship. But the question is, now it's time for you both to be parents. Will you ever trust a drug dealer with your child? It doesn't matter how much they love you or the baby, but do you have what it takes in the household to keep the child safe? Can you even keep your own self safe? Now, you know all that energy is going to take to take care of that child. You need to make sure that the drug deals don't happen in front of the child and no one will ever accidentally give the child your drugs that you're selling or your partner. And you got to keep in mind, if the competitor finds out about the child, they can use them as a hostage to force you both to keep working. And you're now thinking about trying to plan. You might want to ponder that prayer that you prayed. Because you got to remember now, dating that drug dealer or marrying means you have to be smart and think like a criminal. So you need to understand exactly what's going to get you arrested and what to avoid. Now, of course, now, when you really think about it, what happens when you decide to leave a relationship? What happens when you decide to to tell on them? And you really think that your safety from and from a law enforcement perspective is going to offer you a safe place, depending. There's nothing wrong to 
wanting to do the right thing and report everything you know, but it shouldn't be at the expense of your own life or your child or children. And what happens if they get arrested or you? And you got to keep in mind, it's not just your business or theirs. And if the person get arrested, maybe that's you. You, you have to go in and law enforcement is going to interview you, interrogate you, not just once, not just twice, but over and over. Think about it. You ready to defend yourself? And the question you got to really ask and answer before you get on your knees, you know you're not. Should you really be dating or wanting to marry a drug dealer? Where is the silver lining? The only thing you can say is maybe there's some financial stability, and you know that's not going to last long. Think about it. In that lifestyle, you can be a millionaire today and lose everything the next day. And it's all based upon an if, making sure you don't get arrested or killed. So what's the purpose? You and your life partner, you know, they became your life partner when you desired to date them and wanted to marry them, you know, it's true. But you're always at risk. And again, you're going to lose everything. You know you are. Can't start a family. Can't even share the joy of being with someone with all your family and friends because you don't know who you can trust. And you know it's not a real relationship, especially if you can't even convince yourself to stay or let it be known to others. And then you got that moral burden that your partner is ruining lives out there. Do you care? I mean, really, do you really care? Do you really care about those teenagers out there, maybe in your family? Are getting addicted every day in gangs or using drugs as a way to brainwash them? Do you really care? Do you really care about the fact that that person in your life that you wanted to date and marry, that they're handling the pills of death to others? And that doesn't bother you? Not even the fact that you recognize it's time to get out of that relationship and you want to get out of there without any harm to you physically or mentally. You do, don't you? All right, believer of the household of faith. Oh, yes. You were the one who got on your knees. You said you was in a right relationship with God. So if you were, then the words should line up but what you're talking about, wanting to do in a relationship. But what does the Bible say? Not Gary, not you, or you, or you, or your pastor, or your mom, rabbi, priest, or human teacher. The Greek word pharmakia has been used since 500 years before our Savior's time to refer to the buying and selling of drugs for both recreational and medical purposes and also to refer to quacks selling miracle cures. You notice how I started off the topic about who can be classified as a drug dealer, legal or illegal. And so when we talk about pharmacia, think about today's English word, pharmacy. It refers to a dealer or supplier of drugs, you know, a drug store. Now, back to the Bible. We never left it. Selling any type of drug is a sin. Think about it. You think God is going to ever be pleased with the dangerous lifestyle of a drug dealer? And, and you tell me you willfully pray to enter the devil's playground? No believer of the household of faith, you know, follower of Jesus Christ, child of God, should even think of living that type of lifestyle. Even if you could gain a lot of money, the love of money. You know we don't live for money. We live for Christ. And the question is, what good is it for somebody to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? You heard that song. And you know you're not even supposed to be hanging out with drug dealers, you've heard me say. Those with whom we spend our time with will determine our character. We're either going to be like them 
or they us. But people like this, they're going to lead you to astray from Christ. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, the word not carry. Now, what I meant was that you should not associate with people who call themselves brothers or sisters in the Christian faith, but live in sexual sin, are greedy, worship gods, use abusive language, get drunk or are dishonest, don't eat with such people. And you go down to verse 33, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Now, let me ask you a question again. You don't mind, do you? Would God want you to sell something that's hurting others? You know, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 6, it says, If anyone causes one of these little ones, you know, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. And over in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 16, it says, For they cannot rest until they do evil. They are robbed of sleep till they make someone stumble. Now think about that chapter and verse in light of what we just got through talking about. Why would God want you to be in a dangerous situation where you could possibly die? And you already know, as citizens of planet Earth, You know, remember now, a lot of times you can be so heavenly minded or earthly good. So let's be earthly good. Because you remember now how our Savior let his disciples know. You do the study, the research. When he had him take the coin from the fish, render unto Caesar what Caesar, unto God what's God. And I say that to say, you know, we're supposed to obey the laws. Governing us from a federal standpoint, state standpoint local, township, county, province, you name it, village. Let me ask you some pondering questions. You don't mind, do you? Why do you desire to release your emotions to the dealer of illegal and harmful drugs? Would you discontinue a relationship if you discovered an individual was a drug killer? What would you encourage a friend to do in the same situation? And how would you feel if the death-destroying drugs found their way to your parents, your children, your grandchildren? What would you do? Welcome back to Challenges of Faith radio program. This is Jinky the Cruz Valentino and Gary McCants in Divine Connections. Talking about drug addiction is hard, but it's important. We're discussing Miss and Mr. Drug Dealer, also known as Death Distributor, today, which means we're looking at how drug dealers can cause serious harm. Drug addiction is when people can't stop using drugs, and it's a big problem. Sometimes, the people who sell drugs also use them, which makes things worse. We all know that drug addiction can have a detrimental impact on both the body and brain, as well as on relationships. Even though it's not a pleasant subject, it's important to talk about it to understand why it's a problem. Imagine a situation where someone in the family is addicted to drugs, like Miss and Mr. Drug Dealer. Drug addiction is bad for your body. It can make your body sick causing problems like heart issues, trouble with breathing, and liver damage. Imagine if dad is addicted to drugs and can't stop using it. When he gets very sick, there won't be enough money to take him to the hospital. Dad's drug use can make him forget important things like birthdays or important family events. 
This can make the family feel hurt and disappointed. He might even spend all the money or the family's money on drugs instead of food and bills. Buying drugs costs a lot of money, making it hard to pay for important things like food and housing, the family's needs like groceries or school supplies. This is because it can mess up dad's mind or his mental health. Using drugs can make his brain not work right, making him feel very anxious and sad or even crazy. When dad uses drugs, he might act strange or angry. This can make his family members feel scared and sad because they don't know what he might do. Drugs can make it tough to think clearly or remember things and make the right choices. Drugs are so powerful that they make you want them all the time, even if they're hurting you and your family. Using drugs can make you clumsy and not think straight, leading to accidents and injuries. When dad is on drugs, he might not be careful. He could get hurt or hurt others by accident, like crashing the car. If dad gets caught with drugs by the police, he might have to go to jail. This can be very scary and sad for his family. People who use drugs often stop hanging out with friends and family. Dad might stop spending time with his family because he wants to be with his drug-using friends. This can make the family feel lonely and left out. Families of drug users can be sad and struggle with money because of the addiction. Because dad spends money on drugs and might not be able to work, the family could have trouble paying bills and rent. They might even lose their home. Using drugs can break trust in relationships, leading to fights or breakups. That's for spouses too. When dad is addicted, he might lie or do things that hurt the family's trust in him. Understanding the reasons behind this behavior. 1. Lack of support. Some people don't have enough support from others, so they might end up trying harmful things to feel better. 2. Quick relief. Using drugs can make you feel better right away when you're upset even if it's just temporary relief from stress, anxiety, or depression. 3. Peer pressure or friends' influence. Sometimes, when friends or people you know are into drugs, it can make you think it's normal and you might try it too. If you or someone you know is dealing with drug addiction, here are some steps you can take to get help. 1. Admit there's a problem. First, dad has to realize that there's a problem with drugs. Some people don't want to admit it, but it's the first step. 2. Talk to a professional. Dad should talk to a doctor or counselor who knows about addiction. They can help him figure out what to do. Join a support group. Being in a group of people who understand what you're going through can be very helpful. It makes you feel like you're not alone. It's important to surround oneself with positive influences. Dad could seek out supportive friends or join social groups or clubs where he can meet like-minded people. This would provide him with a healthier support system to turn to during times of emotional distress. Go to a program. Sometimes, 
going to a special program to quit drugs can help. They might give you medicine to stop cravings and teach you how to stay away from drugs. Get your family involved. It's important for your family to know what's going on. They can support you and learn about addiction too. Know the law. Dealing drugs is illegal and you can get into trouble with the police. It's important to understand the consequences. Find help in your community. Many places have programs and services to help with addiction. Look for them in your area. Develop resilience to personal growth. Dad could invest in self-improvement activities such as reading personal development books, attend workshops, work with a mentor. This is my favorite. Here are some books that have helped me see life's challenges as opportunities for growth, and I'm happy to share them with you. So for reading personal development books, I have here The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. This is a self-help classic that talks about how thinking positive can lead to personal success and happiness. It gives you practical advice and inspirational stories that help you overcome challenges and achieve your goals. John Maxwell's books. 1. Developing the Leader Within You. This book emphasizes the importance of self-awareness, self-control, and emotional intelligence, which are key components of emotional resilience. The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership While primarily about leadership, this book touches on the importance of perseverance and adaptability in the face of challenges, which are vital aspects of emotional resilience. Next, Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You Learn This book explores the idea that setbacks and failures are valuable learning experiences. Here, John Maxwell's insights encourage us to reframe adversity as an opportunity for growth and development. Failing Forward, Turning Mistakes into Stepping Stones for Success In this book, John Maxwell discusses how to use failures and setbacks as stepping stones to success. Learning to bounce back from disappointments is a crucial aspect of emotional resilience. Today Matters, 12 Daily Practices to Guarantee Tomorrow's Success. John Maxwell provides practical advice on how to prioritize daily habits that contribute to long-term success. These habits can help you manage stress and maintain emotional balance. The Difference Maker Making Your Attitude Your Greatest Asset This book focuses on the power of positive attitude in facing challenges. Developing a positive outlook can significantly enhance our ability to cope with stress. While these books are not specifically designed to address drug addiction, they provide valuable insights and principles that can help us build emotional resilience, make wise choices, and better cope with the stresses and adversities of life without resorting to drugs 
as a coping mechanism. Attend workshops. John Maxwell has Leadership Gold Live. This workshop focuses on leadership development and personal growth. While leadership is a primary theme, John Maxwell's teachings often delve into topics like resilience, self-awareness, and overcoming obstacles. Another workshop is Live to Lead. This annual leadership and personal growth event hosted by John Maxwell features various speakers and thought leaders. While leadership is a central theme, the event covers a wide range of personal development topics, including resilience, adaptability, and dealing with challenges. Tony Robbins, Unleash the Power Within. This is a multi-day workshop that focuses on personal growth, resilience, and taking control of your life. Attendees learn strategies to overcome limitations, build mental toughness, and develop a positive mindset to face challenges. De- I'm sorry, date with destiny. This delves into the psychology of personal development. As a participant, it helps you gain a deeper understanding of yourself, your values, and your potential for resilience and personal growth. Bob Proctor and Sandy Gallagher Paradigm Shift Bob Proctor's Paradigm Shift Seminar explores the power of mindset and belief systems in personal growth and resilience. Attendees learn to identify and shift limiting beliefs, enabling them to develop a more positive and resilient mindset. Work with a mentor. My my personal favorite mentors are John Maxwell, Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Bob Proctor, Robert Hollis, Jim Ron, and Earl Nightingale. Although uh, Bob Proctor has passed, well, he still has Sandy Gallagher. So building emotional resilience can help you better cope with stress and adversity without resorting to drugs. Remember, it's a long process. So be patient. Getting better takes time. And sometimes, people go back to using drugs. That's okay. You just have to keep trying. Talking about drug addiction and drug dealers is tough. But it's necessary to make our communities safer and healthier. It's okay to ask for help. And there are people and resources available to support you. These solutions aim to help individuals and families overcome the negative impacts of drug-related issues and making positive changes in their lives. So thank you all for tuning in. This is Jinky De La Cruz Talentino, Life Coach and Digital Copywriter. If you need assistance in crafting persuasive content, or a compelling video sales letter for your business to increase leads and sales, I'm happy to help. Feel free to reach out to me via email at jinkyyourlivestoryteller at gmail.com. And ladies and gentlemen, let me pass the mic to our host, Gary McCants. <laughs>